वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो विल बी डिस्कसिंग रिंग काउंटर एंड बिफोर वी प्रोसीड फर्दर लेट अस रिकैप व्हाट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड फोर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ शिफ्ट रजिस्टर्स एंड देयर आर वीडियोस अवेलेबल रिगार्डिंग ऑल फोर शिफ्ट रजिस्टर्स देन द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट वी वुड बी फोकसिंग ऑन इज द शिफ्ट रजिस्टर काउंटर दीज आर टू स्पेशल काइंड ऑफ शिफ्ट रजिस्टर्स दैट क्रिएट अ काइंड ऑफ काउंटर and we have to study in it a ring counter and a johnson counter so in today's video we'll be mainly focusing on ring counter so let us move on to the diagram if we look at the diagram there are uh, some changes in it like you can see there's a word ori being used over here so in order to understand the operation of this ring counter and we are designing it for four bits let us study first of all what is this ori if you want to understand what is the purpose this ori is uh, serving in this particular diagram let us understand uh, this ic there is already one video that is regarding how to make connections of 7476 why i am telling you this over here is because i want you to focus on these particular pins preset pr stands for preset and clr stands for clear in the same way uh, you can see here also actually there are two jk flip flops in it so this is preset and clear for the first uh, flip flop and this is preset and clear for the second flip flop so what you have to understand is if suppose you are having an ic of any particular flip flop so in addition to the inputs and the outputs there are some additional things also available in the flip flop and those things we call as direct inputs or we also call them as asynchronous inputs or they are also called as ori what we call as overriding input overriding input and that is visible in the diagram uh, here also if if you can uh, focus here this is the clear and this is the preset now same thing is basically available here also in our diagram if we look at our diagram we are using a d flip flop so in addition to d and q that is the input and the output we are also having two direct inputs or they are also called as asynchronous inputs and if you see this o ori this ori is connected uh, in the first flip flop it is connected to preset you can see here this line is going to preset and if we focus on second third and the fourth flip flop the ori is connected to clear and the next thing that we have to understand is the ic's that you are using or you can say the flip flops that you are using they are active low how do we come to know it is because you can see a bubble over here so these are active low it means when your ori value is zero that time what will happen if you are applying a preset button then that value would be 1 and if you are applying a clear button then that value would be zero so in our diagram if we look at the first flip flop that would be set at uh, 1 and if we look at the other flip flops rest of the flip flops since they are uh, connected to clear so they will be having a value of 0 and uh, once you want the operation of the ring counter then after your ori is 0 you have to immediately keep ori as 1 because once your ori is 1 you will disable it if you will look at the video uh, where i have connected this 7476 in for a 3 bit syn synchronous counter i have told you there also all these pins are connected to vcc that is logic 1 and with this we are able to disable these pins so that is what actually we are doing here also you have to give ori in the beginning so that your preset is 1 and clear is 0 initially and then while you want to operate your ring counter your ori value must be 1 so in that way you would be able to disable your ori so let us uh, then 
understand how it operates. So, you can see here the diagram is available here also. So, if we look at the initial clock pulse, if suppose you are taking Q naught, Q 1, Q 2 and Q 3 and what you are basically doing is you will first provide your ORI value, your ORI value is suppose 0 initially. So, what will happen Q naught, Q naught is connected to preset. So, Q naught would be 1 and the other you can say flip flops they are connected to clear. So, those values would be 0. So, this is the status initially. Then what you had to do is you had to keep your ORI as 1. So, once your ORI is 1 you are basically disabling this ORI and then it will depend on the clock pulse and you can see in the diagram there is no bubble here. So, you had is you had to understand it is a positive edge triggered flip flop. So, once you are giving your clock pulse as 1. So, at the rising edge of the clock what is going to happen is as you can understand here this is nothing but a shift register only and uh, this sh uh, shift register is like your SISO. So, you can revise your notes of SISO and uh, you can understand what basically will happen over here is the shifting operation. So, all the bits uh, will be shifting. So, this 1 will shift here, this 0 will shift here and this 0 will shift here. Now, what about this bit? Now, we, uh, again you have to understand the next important point I will go back to the previous diagram. You can see here what makes this uh, shift register different is basically this connection. If you will look at this connection what we are doing is the output of the last flip flop is connected as input to the first flip flop. So, this is what makes your shift register as a kind of counter. The output of the last flip flop is connected as an input to the first flip flop. So, that is what we will be doing here also you can see the connection here. So, if we look at our uh, table it means this output that is the last output it will be connected as an input to the first flip flop. So, this 0 we have to transfer here. So, this 0 is actually coming here and now we have to repeat the same process whenever your clock pulse is given as 1 that time accordingly your data will be shifting and your ORI value has to be 1 only means you are disabling your uh, you can say direct inputs. So, let us again start this 0 will move here, this 1 will move here, this 0 is here and now this 0 will be moving here because output is connected as input of the first flip flop. Then again what you have to do is the shifting operation you will move these 3 bits and this bit will be coming here and again let us uh, do the same thing we are shifting these 3 bits and then this 1 is coming here. Now, we will stop why because this state is same as where we had started. Now, we what we have to do is we have to calculate the number of states in a ring counter. So, you can see the first state was 1 triple 0, then it was 0 1 0 0, then it was 0 0 1 0, then it was 0 0 0 1 and again it was 1 triple 0. So, you can see there is first state, second, third and fourth state and this state is same as the first one. So, that leads us uh, to one very important conclusion and that conclusion is if suppose you are having number of bits as n. So, for n number of bits you require uh, n number of flip flops that we already know, but what happens in the ring counter if it is a ring counter then the number of states of that counter the number of states of the ring counter is equal to n only like you have seen here we were dealing with 4 bits, we were dealing with 4 bits. So, we require 4 flip flops that is ok, but then how many states we are having? We are having only 4 states and this is very different from a general counter like there are various videos available you have studied asynchronous as well as synchronous counters and there we have studied if you are having suppose n number of bits 
then you are having n number of flip flops also and with n number of flip flops the number of states in a counter is equal to 2 to the power n so if you are dealing with 4 bits it means your states would be from 0 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 1 okay if it is up counter or vice versa if it is a down counter so that is uh, where the difference lies if it is a normal counter then the number of states are 2 to the power n and while as if it is a ring counter then the number of states are only n so the number of unused states is equal to what 2 to the power n minus n and that is basically a disadvantage of ring counter the disadvantage of ring counter is there are too many states which are basically unused in it which we are not able to use like for example here we were having four number of bits we were having four number of flip flops so instead of 16 states we are having only four states here so that's all about the ring counter now the next thing that we would be uh, doing is this is an exercise for you this is a 10 bit ring counter you can see here the number of flip flops that i have used is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so there are 10 number of flip flops and again it is of the same pattern that i am giving preset to the first flip flop so that would be 1 and rest of the flip flops are connected to clear so they will they would be all zero now what you had to do is you had to complete the table uh, like i will start this table with this one suppose you are having q0 q1 q2 q3 so what i want you to do is i want you to complete this table okay so initially your uh, ori value would be 0 so due to that what is going to happen is this q0 would be 1 because it is connected to preset and the other values are 0 and now uh, what you have to do is you will keep your ori as 1 only so you will disable your ori and your clock pulse would be high and you are looking at 0 to 1 transition because it is a positive as triggered circuit now i want you to complete this table so uh, while you will complete this table what will happen this one would be shifting like this and this will be for q naught 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 okay the rest would be all zeros so all the column this is an exercise for you you will complete this this will be all zeros here now why we have uh, done this particular question is there is one advantage of the ring counter also and that ring counter is that particular advantage is it can basically directly convert your numbers or you can say it can directly decode your numbers into decimal and uh, you will be understanding this with one example uh, you must have already studied uh, if you look at this diagram this is nothing but a decoder actually you can see there are uh, 0 to 9 are the numbers and these are its binary equivalents and accordingly this is a decimal equivalent of the number so if you are giving suppose 1001 so it is telling you that the number is 9 okay and here it is active low logic so the point is if we look at the normal uh, decoder circuit and uh, you and you had to convert numbers uh, from 0000 to 1001 into a normal decimal number then this is the kind of circuit that is actually required to convert your number from binary to decimal for 0 to 9 now that thing can be easily done if suppose you are using a ring counter you can see here in the ring counter if you uh, will look at any of the states at a time there is only a single input that remains 1 okay so you can directly say suppose uh, you are at this state so q2 is only 1 so you can say the number is 2 if suppose we look at this state only 4 is active q4 is active so you can see the number was 4 or if you look here only q9 is active you can directly say the number is 9 so uh, we say that if it is a ring counter of uh, suppose 10 bits so it creates a self 
decoding circuit. Uh, so, you can directly convert your numbers into the decimal. Okay. So, you can finish this as an exercise for you. I would see you in the next video where we would be discussing the Johnson counter. Till then God bless you all and thank you.